when he said earlier that environment is, it can be definitive. In other words, if the circumstance surrounding your statement means this is the only reasonable explanation, then we go with that, even if it's not what you said. That's what the Mishnah is talking about. However, the Mishnah wants to teach something else, Agavurcha. The Mishnah wants to teach that there are people who throw around commitments, Nidarim, Shvuos, etc. For example, you say to somebody, I promise I'll meet you at the pizzeria at one o'clock. That means if you're there at 101, you violated a Shvua or a Neder. Now, people make these kind of statements all the time. And the Gemara frowns on it. We learned earlier in another Masechta that if I'm a Shoimer on Ruvain's object and I did nothing wrong, it got lost by, uh, I can, I have a choice. I can sh make an oath that I didn't do anything wrong or I can replace his object. And the, and the halacha, basically, the, the, the gestalt of Yiddishkeit, you rather replace the object than make an oath. So oaths are really, really frowned on. So in this Mishnah, they're going to create a hypothetical that when I make my oath, I say I'm making an oath like the, and they're going to use the word the evil people do. Now, we don't mean really that's how you're going to make your oath. What it wants to do is teach Agavurka that people who are flippant with oaths or oath-like statements are leading themselves to Rishus because if you make 25 oaths in the course of the day, dollars to donuts, you're going to not keep all of them. And therefore, you bring yourself to Rishas. So the Gemara is going to call, the Mishnah is going to call a person who is wanton in his oaths a Russia. Okay? On the other hand, on the other extreme, since the Torah doesn't want us to make oaths, if you were to make a statement, I'm going to make an oath like a tzaddik does to meet you at lunchtime. Well, since the deacon were discouraged from making oaths, that would not be an oath. Okay, if you say I'm I'm gonna like the bad guys, I'm gonna meet you for lunch. You're now obligated. But if you say like the good guys, then you're not obligated. So that's just an agavurcha. That's just to teach us the attitude towards oaths. But it's not really core material to the Mishnah. Core material to the Mishnah is a yad is a yad if it's discernible from the circumstance. Okay, so with that hakdama, kinidre rishayim. If a person says, "I make a neder like the bad guys," neder, he has made a neder, and I explained the rat what the extra limud there is. And that would apply with neder, with uh, nazir, uh, with becoming a nazir, uba korban, or with bringing a korban, or beshvua. If you say, "I I swear I won't drink coffee," bli neder. Okay. Now, kenidrek sherim. But if you say I'm making this neder like the good guys, like the kosher people, La Omar Klum, you haven't said anything because the good guys avoid making nedarim. It's certainly not that kind of neder anyway. Whatever, yeah. Now, there is an extra thing. There's a nedava. Okay, you can do a bring a korban, it's a nedava. That's not a neder. A neder is I'm bringing this shepsel. A nedava is when I go to Yerushalayim, I'll bring a shepsel. It's not specified. Nedavas, good guys do do. So nedavas, if he does that, if he says, 
nedavosam, like their nedavos. So neder would be a valid neder. Nazir would be a valid nazir. Carbon would be a valid carbon. And you'll notice it leaves out shvuos. That's also intentional because it, you can't, nedava is a gift. You can't give a gift of not drinking coffee. You can give a gift of bringing a korban, a gift to Hashem. You could give a gift to Hashem by becoming a Nazir, but you can't deprive yourself except the incidental to Nazirus. All right, that's the end of the Mishnah. Now, if I say, like the bad people, since bad people are not, we don't approve of them making the Dharam, the Gemara hypothecates, Here's what the guy is really trying to say. The way the bad guys throw oaths around, I don't want to be like them. I'm not making an oath. So the Gemara suggests that as an option. So why do we say that a neder like the bad guys is a valid neder? Omar Shmuel, because the Shmuel explains, he added one more word that the Mishnah didn't yet tell us, the Gemara is telling us, but Omar Kenidre Rishoyim, and then he adds one more word. He adds Harani, and that would affect certain kinds. He adds a lie, and he adds Hemenu or he adds a meno. He adds one of these words. And if you read the first Ron, and the Ron explains, and now the Gemara is also going to explain, when he says, Kenidre Rishayim Hareini, I will be, or I am becoming, that's when a Nazir is walking by. And he's making a neder that like the like of Niziros. If he says a lie and there's a shepsel sitting there, then he's making a commitment to bring that sheep as a korban. And if he says hemenu from it, and there's a cup of coffee sitting there, that means he's saying that I'm making a shvua, I will not drink that cup of coffee or maybe any coffee, depending on his mindset. Okay, now mindset, another thing this Mishnah teaches is the mindset issue. Because if you know that good people don't make shavuos, and you say, I'm making a shvua like good people, then in your mind, you're undoing your oath because it doesn't really matter what you say if it's absolutely clear what you mean. And if so, if you make a nether that you clearly don't mean, it's not a real nether. If I say right here, right now, I, we nether, I'm going home and divorcing my wife. So clearly it's just by way of example here and I don't have to go home and divorce my wife, even though I use the words. Because the, it's clear from the context, I'm explaining something I don't mean to make a netter. And that's also being taught to us in this Mishnah. So now Shmuel spells it out. If he says, Harani, I am, or I will be, be, that's referring to Naziros. And as the Ron had already pointed out, because a Nazir is walking by. A lie, if he says it's incumbent upon me, and there's an animal there, and it's a mum-free animal that's able to be sacrificed. It's not a horse, right? But Corbin, he means it to be a Corbin. Hemeno. If it's, he says hemeno, set from it, to be apart from it, then he's making a shvua that he will not drink or whatever that thing. Hareni bin Aziros, he says, I am taking upon myself Hareni. And why does Shmuel insist it's Naziris? Maybe I might say I am and I mean not going to eat for the rest of the day, I'm making a tainus, okay? Aside from the fact that you had to do it at Mincha yesterday, but you're, 
I'm, I, maybe I'm being with Kabbalah Tainus, the Gemara says, Dilma Hareini Batainus Gemara, he's becoming with Kabbalah Tainus. So Shmuel finally gets to what the Ran said, Omer Shmuel, Kishahoya Nazir Oever Lefanov, a Nazir is walking by. So the circumstance clarifies the Yad, because we already learned Yadim have to be clear, you have to know what we're talking about. Okay, now Eli Hemenu, uh, and then Hemenu Bekarban. We leave out Eli Bekarban. Hemenu Bishvua. He says about a makes a shvua. So maybe Dilma Hemenu Laachilna Kaomar. Maybe he means I'm going to drink that cup of coffee. I'm going to drink from that cup of coffee. So Omar Rava, Rava says, no, he has to add the words, lo oichal, he won't eat it. But that's a machlaikis. Shmuel does not say you have to do that. Omar himeno shala oichal, I will not eat or I will not drink from that object or that cup or that thing. So ichachi maila memra. So if you're going to say, shavua olai, Hemenu lo yachal. That's not a yad. That's now a full fledged shavua. So what are we learning in the Mishnah? What are we? What what's the chiddush in the Mishnah? Mahu detema. What might you have said? Hallo mafik shavua vepume. He did not actually make an oath. If I say I will not drink from that cup of coffee. Did I say I swear? I didn't say that. But it's clear from the circumstance that I am committing myself to not drink from that coffee. Kamash Malan Hadain. So it tells you that if I that it's like the Nidharam of the wicked, going back to the initial question, does it mean I do want or I don't want? I do want to be like them and make an oath, or I don't want to be like with them and not make an oath. Kamash Malan Hadain, that it is, you are making an oath. If I say like the wicked, I won't drink that coffee. So that's Epis and Oath. All right. Now, what about the end of the Mishnah that talked about Kisharim? Kenidre Kisharim Lo Omar Klum. And then be, the device on Nader, that if the Lasha is like the Nidarim of the wicked, it's meaningless. But if it's like the Nidavos of the wicked, if it's a positive, it does count. Okay? Mantana, Sha'ani Le Ben Nader Nidava. So clearly, this Mishnah. And the way we're explaining it makes a big distinction between a nether and a nedava. A good guy doesn't make a nether, but he does offer a nedava. Okay? So, lame a loka reb meir, a loka reb yehuda. So, we're going to see as we proceed that neither reb meir nor reb yehuda could possibly have made this statement. Okay? The sanya, because we have a brysa, uh, Tuv Asha Lo Tidor, etc. The Brysa goes on. The actual words are it's better not to swear that you'll pay Ruvain the five bucks you owe him and to pay him anyway, even though you don't swear. That's preferable. And we're going to see what sequence we're talking about to make to saying, I swear I'll give you the money tomorrow and then giving it to him tomorrow. It's better not to swear. He says, look, my Mordechai, I need my money. So I say, I'll get it to you tomorrow. That's like, mate, that's a yad. I shouldn't do that. I say, I hear you. I could do that. And then give him the money tomorrow. That's better than committing to giving him the money tomorrow. Even though superficially, it might appease him. He might feel more comfortable now. He has your assurance you're getting the money. From your perspective, you shouldn't do that. Because what if, God forbid, you're not in shul tomorrow? And you don't give him the money. Now you're over a violation of a netter and you get Malchus for that. All right. So, Tov, what? That might be a yad. 
I will look at the context. You say to me, I have to have my five bucks by four o'clock this afternoon. And I say, okay. That's probably a yard. I mean, I'm not a, not poskining, but in, from what we're learning, that as long as the context makes it clear that my machshava is to commit to giving you the money, then it's that's a yad. Yeah. Attention to, to, to do that yeah. over. You know, if everything. I, I, now we're dealing with English, and they're dealing. So saying you would, that's your intention. I don't know if that's a commitment or not. I could argue that both ways. Yes. I can't take two people at once. Yeah, but, but that doesn't mean you have Rashis to go making the Durham. What that means is that on this Yom Kippur, and then there's a whole dispute as to what the Girsa there is, but on this Yom Kippur, I'm asking God, to treat the Dorim I may make during the year, and then by circumstances outside my control, not meet, I want God to cut me some slack and not consider those broken the Dorim. That doesn't give you permission to now intentionally make a commitment and not do it. You can't, you can't rely on Kol Nidre or Hataris Nidorim to exempt you from the rules of Nidorim. That's only to give you a, like an escape hatch if it happens inadvertently, if you make a commitment and forget it. You know, I'm, all right, I'm gonna put a, a again, Blinetter, I'm gonna put a dollar in the pushka tomorrow. I'm gonna put $2 in the pushka tomorrow morning, not a dollar. I think that even uh, when it comes to giving money, that that's a, just thinking it is a commitment. And then I only put a dollar like I do every morning. So that's what Kol Nidre was for, or Hataris and the Dharam, not to, wig, to, not to give you a, an escape hatch so you can go now make the Dharam. If you do that, then you're one of the Rishoyim. And you're not a Russia, Erwin. Okay, let's go weiter. Tov low tidor, et cetera. It's better you should not have vowed. And now, tov mize umize she'enenidr kaliker. Whether or not you plan to pay, it's better to never make a neder relating your obligations to another person whatsoever. Divrei Reb Meir. That's Reb Meir's opinion. So Reb Meir's opinion is better you should pay. If you don't pay, better you shouldn't swear you're going to pay. And even if you do pay, still better you should swear not to pay. Reb Yehuda, uh, well, you shouldn't swear at all. Reb Yehuda, Oimer, toiv mizeh mizeh noider v'sholem. He puts it in a different order. He puts swear and pay not as the worst, but as the best example that if I really owe you the money and if you're really worried, you won't have it tomorrow when you need it, then his opinion is I should bring you to this, the, the menuchas and nefesh, to the sense of comfort of committing to give you the money. Now it might be that Alan's formula, and then pay it, of course. And it might be that Alan's formula, that if you could come up with a formula that has an if built in, that might be preferable, but that's a philosophical comment. I'm not poskining anything. All right. Now, now the Gemara says, so we just, I think, pretty much show that neither Reb Meir nor Reb Huda could have written our Mishnah because the Mishnah says that the neder of, of the Gemara rather, uh, the Mishnah says that the neder of a good guy is no neder. If you say that, it's no neder at all. And Rabbi Yehuda would say that's the good thing to do. All right. So a filatema Reb Meir, you could even say that our Mishnah was authored by Reb Meir and ki ka'ama Reb Meir, when did Reb Meir say you shouldn't vow at all? With a neder formulation. Keneder. 
Benedava loka Omar. But if it's an Adava formulation, he never said that. And the Mishnah does say that the nadava of a good guy, if you make a commitment, like the good guys do, I'll give you the money. Okay? That's a nadava. That's not a neder. Because it's a gift formula. So I, at the best, the best I can do in English. Uh, you, you have a puzzle. I'm wondering, I mean, the, the rest of the Pasuk says, Matsos Vasecha Tishmor Vasisa. Right. Is that an essay of part of Tayag? Because if it is, then maybe you should make them the, the nether. Well, that's Rabbi Yehuda's point. It's it's clearly not. No, I, to my knowledge, I may be wrong. Nobody lists that as a when a tie in any formula of Tayag. It's just a behavior. All right, let's go weiter. Vaha Ketani bin the we do say that if that virtuous people offer nadavos concerning becoming a nazir or becoming or bringing a carbon, so it's a it's like you're trying you you you're slicing an orange too thin. If I have to bring the, uh, the, the, the carbon, what's the difference what word I use? Why does one word make it a valid commitment and one word make it an invalid commitment? So the Gemara says, it, okay, that's the next, that, okay. Tani, nadav v'nazir uba carbon. No, you ha let's modify the Mishnah a little bit and say, teach it that if I'm not of a to become a Nazir or to bring a Korban like the good guys do, it would be valid. And that avoids that little issue. So Maishna neither delay. So what's so bad about making a neder that Rebbe Mayer says you should never do it ever under any circumstances, even if the dollar's in your hand, then you're handing it to him. I swear this is your dollar. I mean, I, I can't violate that netter. I'm handing it to him in a minute, in a second. So what's so special? Dima asi boli de tekala. Because you are absolutely certain. I'm standing in it full, two feet away from Ruvain, and I'm handing him the dollar in a second. So I say, I swear I'm giving you your dollar. And that is an earthquake. And I fall into, you know, like Kairach. And, I, and the dollar goes with me, and he doesn't get his dollar. So not only am I eaten up by the earth, but I violated a neder. I mean, I'm giving an absurd example. But we all know that we make a commitment, I'll drive you to the airport. And then you, your wife gets sick and you have to call a guy and say, I'm sorry, take an Uber. I mean, life intervenes. So therefore it's preferable not to make a neder. Kehillel Hazakein, like the story about Hillel Hazakein. Oh, what, oh, I left something out? Yeah. Dilma Asi Bo Lide. Oh, okay. Nidava Nami. Lo. So therefore, you shouldn't make Nidava commitments. Dilma Asi Bo Lide to color, because there too, life could intervene and you're not able to fulfill your commitment. So the Gemara explains that when you, that uh, uh, there is a way to make a Nidava. We, that is totally virtuous. It's like my story, if the, if, I'm, if the dollar is sticking out and Ruben can grab it, then I can say, here, 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 I'm giving you your dollar. Because he can grab it, even if the earth opens up beneath me, he can grab it before it flutters into the hole. <laughs> He's more interested in his dollar. Ruve learns with me every day. He's not interested in what? I, you ask these like questions, the texts use to make a commitment. It's Nadava. Makshava, I, I said to begin with, Makshava is always part of it. 
no matter what you say, if you if you have a mental reservation, it's not a neder, with the exception of giving to tzedakah. Okay, so so it doesn't use the word machshava because machshava is a given on all of them. Yeah. Up there, they keep keep on, you know. Uh, you have to pay it on Monday. It becomes problematic. Everything becomes problematic. But if you but if you give an adava to the show, first of all, in our show, if you have two options, you can give nothing, or you can make a mishaberach, which automatically commits you to at least 18 bucks. And if you just say um, a nedava or, or a matana, then it's automatically 18 bucks. And it's recorded by somebody, I believe. I don't know, when I go to my son's shul on uh, Simcha's Tyra, and I'm fairly generous with at the auction, they're very busy putting numbers in little sleeves on the page with my name. So these things do get recorded and you are supposed to meet your commitment as early as possible, which basically means Monday morning, because what if you have a heart attack on Tuesday? All right, Viter. Okay, so now here's where we are. Kehil el azokin. And the dava is a good thing to do. If contextually, you do it the way Hillel did it. The Sanya, we have a price, uh, Amru al Hillel Azakin. They talk about Hillel Azakin and they say, praiseworthy, the following thing. Shalom mo al Adam the Allah so called Yumov. In his entire life, he never created a situation where it was possible for someone to make use of the animal he would make as an ola, which means it's completely burned, nobody eats it. And he created an environment when he gave his ola that it's impossible for anybody to be moil. Yeah, for him or anybody else yeah, him. to be yeah. moil, okay? So how did he do that? He would bring the Shepsel from wherever he lived through Jerusalem, into Jerusalem, and through Jerusalem, and he would get to the gate of the Beis uh, Mikdash before he was Mekadesh the animal. It was still Chulin. So now if it ran away, right on the steps of the Beis Amikdash, it's chulen, somebody could eat it, or he could confuse it with another animal and inadvertently eat it, but it's chulen, okay? And then as he's walking in, he would sanctify it. And he'd immediately do smicha, allow v'shochat. And then he would immediately either check it himself or have it checked it. So he condenses the time frame in which something could go wrong to such an infinitesimally minimal possibility that effectively he eliminates the possibility of Mila ever, Mila ever occurring with that animal. Okay? And that's how Hillel did it. So's us too. That's called the best. Uh, shit. Okay. That okay. So ha nicha nedava kekarbanos. That works if you if you, for those who say you can apply the word nedava to a carbon. Nedava lenezirus ma'ikel meimar. How can you apply the word nedava? To Nizirus. So Kishim and Atzadik. So we, we take another little story. Shimon Atzadik happened to have been a Kohen. Okay. To Sanya, we have a story about Shimon Hatzadik. I'm a Rib Shimon Hatzadik. Me you may lo ochalti asham nazir tome. In my entire life, I never ate 
from the ashram brought by a Nazir who became Tome during his Naziris. And then you have to reset and start over. So I would not eat from those ashamos. The other Kohen could have, but I didn't. Okay, al But I did once. So everybody looks up and says, wow, what was the one time? Must be an amazing story. And he said, yes, it is. Okay, Pam Achas, Bo Adam Echod Nazir Min Hadarom. There was once this southerner who became a Nazir and he came to me. And Vera'isov Shahu Yafa Nayim Vitov Roy. This guy had gorgeous eyes and he was the handsomest fellow I ever saw in my life. Okay. And his hair, well, it probably was blonde, and he had gorgeous curly hair. Okay, this guy. What? No, 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 this is his whole head of hair. Now he has to cut it all off. What? No, 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 he was... He genetically was born the most handsome person you could imagine. And all the Milas, the ladies love not loving beautiful eyes. They love a gorgeous uh, panim and a nice body form. They love curly hair. So this guy was a lady killer par excellence. The Amarti Lo, so I said to him, Bene. Why did you ever take it upon yourself, Naziris? Forget the fact that you became Tome. Why did you ever become a Nazir in the first place, knowing you're going to have to cut off this gorgeous head of hair? So they go, okay, why would you do such a thing? Omar Lee, he said to me, we live in Erie and I'm a shepherd for my father's flock. I went to fill a bucket or something with water from the well. Now you can look in water and see your reflection. It's like a mirror, okay? I saw my incredibly handsome reflection in the water. The puzzle of love you three, and my Yetzahara got stirred up. He thought something like, Boy, I'm a lady killer. Could I really cut a swath through the basulos? Obikesh Lataradni Min Ha'ilam and the Yetzahara wants me to engage in behaviors that will cancel my shot at Ilam Haba. Amarti Lo, I said to my Yetzahara, Russia, you evil entity, Lama Ata Misga'e Bi'ilam She'en Shalacha. Why are you so conceited in a world that you don't really fit in? That's not for you. What is going to be the future of my, of your, of my physical body? I'm going to be uh, consumed by worms and maggots. Okay. And now he makes a shtickle oath. But avoid by the service of Hashem. That's a formula. We've, we, we've encountered that before of a Shavua. I am going to cut off all my gorgeous hair for the sake of heaven. And, and that's the end of the story. So in other words, Rav Shimon says to this guy, why did you become a Nazir? And he says, look, I'm too handsome for my own good. 
I may succumb to my Yetzirah, I may succumb to temptation. So if I shave off my hair and I'm not so good looking anymore, I'll be doing myself a favor. So immediately, Miyad Umadati, Rav Shimon Atzadik got up, Venish Aktiv al Rosho, and kissed this young man on the head. Viamarti Lo, he said to him, Bini, my son, Kaimaycha Yirba Nizire Niziras be Israel. There should be lots more people in Israel who take on Niziras with the same mindset that you took on Niziras. Okay, Olecha Kasavimer. It's about guys like you that the pasuk says, "Ish ki yafli lindar neder nazir lahazir lashem." A person who separates himself from certain things in this world by taking on the zeros, that's really the nazir lashem. Nazir lashem that you're doing it with an absolutely pure motivation, L'Shem Shemaya. So, Maski Flo Revmani, Revmani, like, is a shtickle action, and he says to Rav Shimon, or about Rav Shimon, my shna ashem nazir, tome delo achel, what's the big deal about not eating the ashem of a nazir who became tome? The asi al chet. Maybe it wasn't that he became, why is this Nazir bringing a carbon? Maybe it wasn't that he inadvertently became Tomei. Maybe he intentionally did something wrong. So therefore, every Asham basically is for some failing. So maybe the guy, maybe Rib Shimon, if he wants to be such a tzaddik, maybe he should never eat any Asham. The al asu, because they all come based on being sinful. So Amale Rav Yona, Rav Yona answers Rav Mane, Haini Taima, this was the rationale that Rav Shimon did not eat the Asham of a Nazir. Kishahen Taihin Nazrin. There are occasions where a person is a Nazir and it's a little tough. You know, there's a wonder if there's a kiddish and shul and there's all this gorgeous wines being served. And he sort of regrets having taken on the zeros. Kishahen metamin veravin alehen yemein zeros. So, or if he became Tome during the 30 days, he has to reset and do another 30 days. So his Naziris will wind up being significantly longer than he, you know, he bit off more than he could chew. He didn't want, he's going to be a Nazir much longer than he thought he would. And Miss Chart Tin Bahen. And he'll regret ever doing it in the first place. So now this doesn't mean literally, but this means since a carbon has to be brought with purity of heart, the nimtzu may be in chulin ba'azara. It's as if, it's not literal. It's as if he brought an unsanctified animal into the azara because his mindset, this is Sydney, because his mindset wasn't 100% L'Shem Shemayim. He regretted his Naziris, so his Corbin is metaphysically flawed. Okay, if that's the case, I feel a Nazi to her Nami. So at the end of your Naziris, there's a sequence of Kurbanos. So maybe at the end, if, 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 if Nazirim tend to be regretful by the time they get to their 30 days, so maybe every Nazir's korbanos are tainted by uh, less than 100% mindset. So Nazir tohar lo. So Rabbi Yoyne answers no. If the guy did his Naziris with Zerizus, and he was really careful not to, to completely avoid 
anything that could disrupt his Naziros, the Amude Amid Nafshe. So therefore, we can assume that he thought long and hard about the implications of becoming a Nazir, and he maintained the purity of intent through the whole 30 days. The Yoho Lindor. And therefore, he could make the vow, and the vow would be whole, and he would do his Naziris perfectly. And we'll stop there and pick up Iboy Shema tomorrow. Oh, yeah, okay. You can call me anything you want. <laughs> ah, well, my back. old friends call me Michael, and my newer friends call me more like come back from New York. You're leaving? Okay. Yeah. Wait, you, you're, a, you're, a, you're a snowflake? No, they call this snow people who jump in and jump out. Okay. Snowflake. <laughs> See you in a few weeks. Okay, exactly. Have a safe birthday. Thank you. Did anybody give you shlichus money? It's what? And no, that's like a, like a flight insurance. There's a gun. I got an automatic. Huh? <laughs> uh-huh. I love this story. Yeah. Nausea reflection. It's a beautiful, I you know. You want to ride or are you going to walk? Okay, good for us, good for all mankind. <laughs>